Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing our latest home renovation project which is this loft bathroom. As you can see it has a limited head height given that it's in a loft space so this did limit us in terms of where certain things could go and what we could do but we definitely wanted to adjust the layout slightly to make better use of the space that we have. There was a corner toilet which was problematic as Simon who is six foot one couldn't stand upright to use it as demonstrated by myself, I'm five foot nine, so this needed to be relocated. When using the basin for face washing for example, the position of that made it really quite awkward, so again we needed to adjust that location. As a small wall had been built on the side of the bath to create a shower area, the space behind was essentially dead space. It was too small and too low to walk behind and there was more than enough storage than was needed. Overall, the bathroom needed completely ripping out in order to update it and to bring it up to the same standard and style as the renovations that we'd done so far. So it goes without saying that we love neutrals. So again, we wanted to have a very neutral guest bathroom. And because it's quite a small space, lighter colors would brighten the room and make it feel more tranquil, which I think is always a nice feeling to have in a bathroom. These were the initial tile samples we selected from Capietra, who very kindly supplied us with the tiles that we had in our ensuite project, and now also for this project as well. We wanted something that would bring warmth to the space whilst also feeling light and bright, so our final choice was the Chatham Porcelain in Oak. There are links below in the description box for the tiles that we use for this project, along with the grout and all other items. As with our other two bathrooms, this was a complete rip out project. So Simon set to work removing all the old gloss storage units and countertops, then the bath, and of course, that small wall in the shower bath area, which was just a stud wall so it was easy to remove. We wanted to fully open up the space so that we could utilize all areas. We had a skip delivered and that soon started to fill up with all of the old fixtures and fittings. Next to be removed was the old laminate flooring, which was not in any way suitable for a bathroom. And because of this, it was heavily damaged by water, which as you can see here, had also gone through to the base floor as no waterproof matting had been used either. After that dark flooring was up, the room already started to look bigger and the space more open and bright. At this point, the boxing in for the shower was still in place, but a leak had been found, surprise, surprise. So Simon removed all of that so that the leak could be investigated further, and then eventually new boxing in could be built for the new shower. It's also always interesting to discover what's hidden behind boxing in or tiles and even wallpaper when renovating. In this case, behind our boxing in, it was a lovely yellow textured Artex, which of course would not be staying. The large wooden roof window, which we had previously, had been leaking for about a month prior to starting this project. It was completely rotten, to be honest, but it was a few decades old, and we just think that it hadn't been properly maintained over the years, so unfortunately it didn't last as long as it should have. So as we did with all of the other windows in the house, we had this replaced. We did opt for a UPVC roof window, which is black on the outside to match all our other windows. And then this one is white on the inside so that it feels brighter. We didn't opt for wood again purely for practicality because whilst wood always looks beautiful, it does require a lot of maintenance. Now, we already had a rough plan drawn out for the layout, but when our new fixtures arrive, we always like to bring them into a space to physically play around with them and check that our theory works practically. Cal was back and he was going to be working on this bathroom as he did with the other two last year. The water damage base floor was removed and the first fixed plumbing was installed. Extra support joists were put in place to aid stability of the floor and a new 18 mm plywood was installed as the new subfloor, which would eventually be tiled. We had a plasterer come in and plaster around the new roof window and also the damaged areas of the ceiling where that partition wall had been removed. 
Whilst the plaster was being left to fully dry before painting, Cal and Simon cracked on with making the new stud wall for the shower plumbing to be housed. We also double and triple checked the height for the new boxing in that the basin would sit on as we needed to avoid that same issue with the previous basin position. Simon created the stud work for the boxing in which would run along the width of the room under the roof window and then boarded that out as it was going to be fully tiled. The stud work wall was also boarded using waddy board for the area where the shower would be situated in the tallest part of the room. Any last filling was done and then a general clean up of the space ready for the following day where Cal and Simon were laying some special matting which the floor tiles could be adhered to as tiles can't be adhered directly to plywood due to expansion. Then it was time for my job, which in this small space was pretty easy as all the walls were going to be tiled fully. So it was just that apex ceiling that needed to be painted. I used a paint and primer, which we already had left over from our mini pool house makeover. And this is a specific bathroom paint from Little Green and it's in the shade Linen Wash. It's a really nice bright neutral, but it does have a hint of warmth to it. So it looks bright, but without feeling cold, like perhaps a stark white. Cal made to start with the tiling, first with the floor. Here you can see those wood effect tiles going down, which we decided to run widthways so that they ran in the same direction as the flow of light coming from the roof window, and also in the same direction as the longest measurement of the room. Then it was on to the wall tiles. As you would have seen at the start of the video, the tiles that we opted for are a brick style subway tile, but they have an irregular color and texture to them. So they don't look as flat and basic as a regular subway tile. To create a lengthening illusion, we chose to have them stacked in a linear design, which also suits some of the mid-century influences that we have throughout the rest of the house. Now, I'm always the one who picks the grout color. So grouting day can be a little bit tense for me because I often worry that I haven't picked the right shade. But fortunately, it was a success. And even though the wall tiles vary in shade, I think the grout that I chose was pretty perfect. And just another reminder that I've left all of the details in the description box below for the colors of both grouts used for these wall tiles and the floor tiles, along with everything else used for this project. Once the grout had been cleaned and left to fully set overnight, the following day was fixture day. And this is when a room really starts to come together and a usable bathroom is finally in sight. First was the side panels for the shower enclosure and then the basin and a hole was drilled for the new tap. You may have noticed in this bathroom that we have opted for chrome fixtures rather than our usual black, which is seen throughout the rest of the house. And this was purely to keep it really light in here just due to the size of the bathroom. Next was the towel rail, which will be the source of heat and of course, to keep towels nice and warm. And then the new toilet followed by the freestanding bath. And here's the finished room. Well, almost, I think we need to put a long mirror on the back of the door, but otherwise we're all done. We're really happy with the tile choice in here. It feels fresh and bright, but it also feels warm. And I think we achieved that tranquil spa-like feeling as well. 
For us, it's nice that we now have a usable bath that doesn't leak as we don't have one in our ensuite. But I think it's also great to have a functioning and welcoming guest bathroom for anyone staying with us. Although this room was always going to be tricky because of the head height, I think we've utilised the space as best as we could and we have everything in here that's needed with space to move about. Now this was the last room on the upper level to be finished so it feels like we're almost complete up here now. Just the landing and stairs to do in the next few weeks and then the entire internal space in the main part of the house has been completely renovated. Stay tuned for our home gym renovation project coming soon but for now thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time.